Hello and welcome to the Python tutorial series. Uh, as you can see, we've got the Python tutorial series 2.0 up on the screen. Uh, for those of you who've been with the channel for a while, you guys know that it's been a little over a year since we've last put a video out. Uh, there's still lots of cool things to talk about when it comes to programming in Python. And uh, truth be told, I've been a little disappointed that the videos haven't been coming out. So I think it's time to start again. I looked at the playlist from the previous uh, Python tutorial series and you see that you know we ended around list variables and we spent some time looking at how to use lists and I think a good place to kick off Python tutorial 2.0 is with the for loop. The for loop is a really important concept particularly when we get into graphics based games and using Pygame. It's also something that's pretty difficult for new programmers to understand. If you've never worked with a for loop, uh, it's a simple concept. The idea, I think, will make sense over time, but it's one of those things that the first time you use it, it's pretty difficult to understand what's going on and why it is going on. So let's go ahead and get started with the Python tutorial series 2.0 and do an introduction to the for loop. So here I am back in my Python programming environment. Uh, before we talk about what a for loop or how a for loop works, let's go ahead and create one and run a short little program and then we'll use the output to explain how the for loop actually worked. So what I want to do is I want to create a new string variable and I'm going to call it greeting and it'll be equal to the string hello. And now what I want to do is I want to use a for loop to iterate over the greeting. So I'm going to say for car or care for character in greeting. This will be a block of code, so I need my colon at the end. And I'm going to print the character variable. This is about as simple as a for loop is going to get. And you can see when I run this program, It prints the string hello down the screen. Uh, let's head over to Microsoft Paint for a second and see exactly why it's doing what it's doing and why we're, why we're getting the output that we're getting. So here on the screen you have a graphical representation of what our program just did. We have our greeting here in hello and then we have our block of code here that says for character in greeting print character. What the for loop does, it's going to iterate over our string. That is, it's going to pass through our string letter by letter, and each time it's going to substitute a letter in for this variable character. So for instance, what will happen is we're going to get the variable character in greeting. So we're going to access that greeting variable that we created. The first character in greeting is this H. So in our first pass, or our first iteration, character is going to get the value of h, and then when we print that variable, the variable character has a value of h. So on the screen, you saw we printed an h. What's going to happen in the for loop next? The for loop is going to check and see, have I reached the end of the string? Since the string has, since there's still data left in the string to iterate over, it's now going to pass through again. It says, okay, this time I'm going to assign this character variable a new value. And in this case, it's going to be the letter E. That's the next value of character as we iterate over the string. So this time through our for loop, this will now be our second run through the for loop, the character variable is equal to a lowercase e. When we print the character variable, you get a lowercase e. The for loop then comes back up to the top to see, do I have more data in that string? Is there still a value in the string that I can make character equal to? There is. It's a lowercase l. So on the third pass through our string, this character, va this character variable has a value of a lowercase l, and we print the lowercase l. 
it's going to continue this iteration until it runs out of values in our string. So character is equal to another lowercase l. Character checks to see if it's at the end of the string. It's not. So it takes this lowercase o, assigns it to the variable character. It prints the o. It checks again. We have the exclamation point. The character is equal to exclamation point. We print the exclamation point right there. And now we're at the end of our string. It checks to see if there's another value here. There isn't. And so the for loop is over. And what will happen is it will go to check for the next line of code, which of course is the end of our program. Now it's a really long way to explain it, but that's exactly how a for loop is working. Each pass or each iteration over our greeting variable here, over our string, is netting character, this variable right here, a different value. Each pass character has a different value until we've exhausted all the values that it can be, and then we move to the end of our program. Now that we're back in our programming window, I can make like a slight change here to this for loop. Instead of saying for character, one of the most common things that you see in a for loop is the letter i. For i in greeting. If I were to run this right now, I would get an error. That's because I'm printing character, but there is no more character variable. That's because each iteration through the greeting, my variable is now i. So instead of printing the character, I'm going to print i. And you should see that we're going to get the exact same results as we did when we were printing characters. In fact, I can change this variable to anything I want. I can change it to banana, so for banana in greeting, which is completely nonsensical, as long as I'm printing banana, I'm going to get the exact same output. Of course, I want you to get in the habit of looking at the for loop as an i, so we're going to go back to for i in greeting. And we're going to change up our for loop a little bit. Instead of printing the value once, I'm going to print i twice. When I run this program, you see I get duplicates of every character in our string, hello. That's because as I iterate over the string, the first pass, i is getting a value of the capital H, it's printing i, then it's printing i again, that's where we're getting the two h's from, and then it's going up to grab the next value, which is the lowercase e. At the end of my for loop, if I print this is the end and run this program again, I'm getting two H's, two E's, all the L's, all the O's, the exclamation points, and then we're printing this is the end. And that's because this line of code won't execute until the for loop has iterated over the entire string. I could also pair this with the concept that we learned about earlier, the, the if statement. And instead of ha having simple print statements right here, I can say for i in greeting, if i is equal to a lowercase l, then print, I found an l. Else, print, that's not an l. This will do the exact same thing in the for loop. It will grab a value for i, but in this case, we're going to do a conditional check on each value of i. If the i is equal to a lowercase l, which of course we have two of here, it's going to execute the print statement, I found an l. If the value of i is not equal to a lowercase l, we're going to print, that's not an l. And what we should end up with is two statements, that's not an l, two statements that we found an l, and then two statements that we didn't find an L. So let's run this and see what it ends up doing. And of course, that's exactly what we got. So each time through our string, we're picking up a new value for I. It's also important to note, if you have a longer string, such as hello world, every character is going to, including the space right here, is going to be iterated over. If we go back to the way we had this set up earlier, for i in greeting, print i. 
and run this program again, you'll see that even the space becomes an iteration. And if I do my if check, if i equals a simple space like that, print this is a space, and run this program. Oops, I uh, need my two equals there. I was doing uh, trying to set i equal to a value. And that's actually an error that I make quite a bit. If you try and assign i a value, it's not going to work because it's part of this uh, iteration right here. So you will create an error if you don't remember the two equal signs when you're doing your conditional checks inside of a for loop. But when I run this now without that error, you can see when I get to the space, it's going to print i with a value of the space, and then it's going to print this is a space because this is the only time that string where our conditional check is returning true. But it is important when you're iterating over a string to, to recognize that even a space is one iteration in your for loop. That's how for loops work, even in the most advanced cases. Now, there are ways to use the for loop to iterate over list variables and use them with random elements. And if you have games that have uh, different objects, like when you get into more advanced games, say with collision detection, um, for loops are used to check and see if two objects are colliding. But for all that complicated mess that we'll eventually get into, this is exactly how a for loop works, and it doesn't deviate much from this. Now, I know there's people that are going to watch this video and say that was absolutely too simple. You know, I expected it to be a little bit more complicated, but it's really not. Um, we are going to dive deeper into how to use a for loop in your program, but that's a good stopping place for this particular video. Uh, when we come back with the next uh, episode in the Python 2.0 tutorial series, we're going to look at a new function called a range function that will allow you to use numbers in your for loop. One of the neat features of using the range function is you can set a loop that isn't infinite. You can set a loop that's going to run a fixed number of times. Say you want a block of code to run 10 and only 10 times. The for loop is how you're going to be able to do that. Uh, we're also going to look at ways to use the for loop in your text games to give your text-based adventure games and some of the things that we've looked at from the previous series, uh, how to give that more style and more presentation and more flair as much as you can in a text-based adventure game. I'm excited to be rebooting the Python tutorial series. I look forward to answering any questions that you have. Of course, if there's anything that you have questions about, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help out however I can. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching the Python tutorial series, and have a great day.